All right, so today we are going to go over our, um, our practice exam. And I'm going to do these, you know, one video at a time. Um, and my son might be making some appearances. You can hear him running back and forth uh, <laughs> in the background. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the practice exam. And I should, I implore you, I guess that's the right word, definitely the right word, implore you, please, 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 please uh, be sure to, you know, look at the practice exam, you know, first, try it out on your own before you come and watch this video because I want you to get as much benefit out of, out of the practice exam as possible. Also note that I did put up another assignment. I don't know how much it is worth. It's an extra credit assignment. You don't have to do it. I don't know how much it will be worth. I'm still deciding that. Um, so keep that in mind. All right, so uh, the first thing we want to do for our exam is take a look at what I've got over here. We see that there's a distribution of points, right? It tells you how many points are on a page. So big thing about my exams, I give you plenty of space. The amount of spaces does not, under any circumstance, correspond to the amount of difficulty I find uh, that particular problem to be. It just has to do with uh, the formatting and also when it comes to a coding problem, I like to give you the full page, if not the, you know, at minimum half a page to code. Okay, just because I know that's what I would like if I need to cross out everything. All right, so immediately on, on the first page, you notice that it's 105 points. So what does that mean? Well, it will be out of 100 points, but there are five points of curve baked into this exam. In other words, you can uh, miss 15 points, end up with a 90, and, you know, so uh, miss 25 points and you still end up with a B. So um, it makes it easier for me not to have, it, it makes it easier for this way, for me to do it this way. Some of the points on this exam are just extra credit, but I've broken them down into good problems for you. Um, all right, so some useful notes. Always, always, always take a look at these. I, I believe these are the exact same. No, these are the exact same as the actual exam. Oh. So take a look at these notes. You're allowed to clarify any answer you give. All questions are essay questions, including the multiple choice. That means that uh, you know you should definitely justify your answer, especially if you are sure that it's you know correct, but you feel like there needs to be an argument made for it. Um, on the flip side, you are allowed to ask for clarification. Okay. You are allowed to ask me what this means. You're allowed to ask me for, to, you know, deal with any ambiguous directions. He's throwing the cheese. He's throwing the food away. So the important string methods are uh, length, character at, right? These methods are really important for you. A substring for being able to grab a particular string. And this one I find very useful, very few people know about it, starts with whether or not a string starts with another string. All right? And then I've listed all the methods that are kind of relevant from the list interface. All right? If there's math, it's never really that complicated. Don't leave a question blank, even if you don't know the answer, but you sh hopefully should know something relevant. Uh, you can't give partial credit for blanks. We can, however, give you partial credit for pseudocode, right? If you don't know how to do it in Java, you can describe the operations as best you can, and I'll give you points for that. I never see people take me up with that, but I'm dead serious. You will get partial credit if you can just describe the steps you need to accomplish. And if you give me a really good a uh, answer, we can use um, extra credit up at our discretion, up to five uh, additional points. All right, so the first question is something that you'll pretty much see. Oh, thank you. You'll pretty much see on the actual exam itself, which is this diagram of a doubly linked list. Um, so we've got nodes A, B, C, and D in a doubly linked list. Every, we're assuming every node has a variable stored in the memory location denoted by a letter. So A's dot next is B, B's dot next is C, C's dot next is D, and they, the arrows are going this way and this way, whatever. Okay, so 
For each of the following questions, please indicate which node is being referenced by the joint variables. So this is going to be the exact same format as the um, on the actual exam, just different questions. So what is the node referred to by d.prev.prev.next.prev? Okay, so let's go ahead and this is actually a lot easier than it looks. D, so the thing previous to D, to D the thing previous to that, dot next, dot prev. So our answer is, is B, right? So we go back whenever we see a, whenever we see a previous and forward whenever we see a next, right? Left and right. You think this is easy? Yeah, I, I mean, I thought so too, but then again, it wasn't too easy to find it on the final exam at Harvard, so you know. I grab, I take a look at their final exams and other schools' final exams to see what uh, good practice exam questions are. All right. C.next.prev.prev. All right. So C.next.prev.prev. That's also B. And let's take a look at this one, and we'll want to zoom out just slightly. Right. A bit more, I think, actually. All right. So this one says b dot next dot next dot prev dot prev dot next dot prev dot next dot prev. Now, incidentally, if you see, you can also just match match up these next and prev so long as they don't go over um, out of bounds and just cancel them out, right? So so we're starting at b. So three in a row would be bad. So dot next dot next dot prev dot prev those cancel out. Dot next dot prev that'll also cancel out. Dot next dot prev that'll also cancel out. So the answer is also b. So b dot next dot next dot prev dot prev dot next dot prev dot next dot prev. Don't tell the students in 1068 and 1051, but I am the professor who makes it easy for myself to grade. Uh, so these were all b's. On um, in my 1068 exam, I have a tendency to make all the true false questions five in a row, just true or false depending on the uh, year, just to make it easy to grade. All right. So we'll go ahead and start on with the next video.